we can just jump right into the action, have a look at the platform, actually. Let's show the platform. So, um, yeah, don't get shocked. Uh, your face big on screen twice in a second. Let me just change that. Uh, look here, tables plus two cows. All right, um, yeah, you see already um, the platform on the screen, I hope. And mm -hmm. I start with what some people know already, right? This is our MTT section for sneak peek, maybe up there next to tournaments, there is a new area. But now, Fedor, let's start with you, right? Uh, talk us a little through the tournament section. How does it look like? You just, I'm, I'm your hand pretty much, right? Tell me what you yeah. do. Brain in hand, I like it. Yeah. Um, so basically, you can see it's the new platform already. Um, so you can see, see the sneak peek already with the cash game section, but basically, we started out with Poker Code and we created an, a course, which was all around MTTs, um, Simon Rono, so Igor Kekarov, Matthias Eibinger, and myself, we created a pretty holistic um, tournament course. And then we realized, hey, this is not everything. We want to make this more interactive. We want to build a community. We really care about the process of the people because it just didn't feel enough. It didn't feel like, oh, you, you give someone a video, like that's not enough. You want to... We, we wanted to interact. We wanted to understand what's the problem because it, you don't give someone 20 hours of video content and then it just, you know, they just become uh, have more fun or become great players. Like that's not how it works. So we realized in that process, and we're like, okay, let's change the entire, let's change our thinking. Let's build a community. Let's make it subscription based. And you can still see all the courses we did back then and all the video material we created. But now, as you can see in the latest upload section as well, and in the community section, if you scroll down a bit uh, below, Stefan, this we're planning to restructure as well. So there will be some more changes to how the content is um, visible because we want to upgrade that and just make it more convenient. Um, you can see there is uh, the latest uploads with all our community coaching. So right now we have Curtis who came out of our community, who, is becoming, who became a community coach um, also moving up the stakes, really awesome to see him grow. Shout out to Curtis, who is in the chat as well. And what we do as coaches is we prepare coaching. So we do on a weekly basis. Now it's almost three a week. So it's a lot of value for, in my opinion, a very low amount of money for this caliber of player. It's like some of the best players in the world giving you pretty tailored coachings. Um, so I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty amazing. And so looking, looking at Matthias's smile right here, it seems like he's, he's listening to you right now. I mean, shout out to Matthias, one of the best in the game, hardest working player I've ever met. Um, a bit harder than Stefan. <laughs> and yeah, I, it, I make up for that with smartness <laughs> you, yeah, and drinking. Um, and it, yeah, so basically that's how we, that's how we went about the tournament section. And now we released the cash game section. And so the idea was we have Stefan as our head coach for cash game. One of the absolute beasts of the game played up to basically anything. I, I think um, 100, 200, 50, 100, 200, 400, maybe sometimes as well, playing all the high stakes um, online. Definitely one of the biggest winners in cash game in terms of win rate for sure. Um, one of the smartest players I know, super happy to have him on board as a team as our cash game head coach. And obviously a head coach needs his own section. And so we wanted to make sure to um, have a journey, like to have a journey in cash game as well. And Stefan, tell us more about that journey within cash game. What's, what's awaiting people? So yeah, talking about the course that we don't want to uh, call it actually, because just I, I need to pick up on that. What Fedor just described was always my feeling, right? It's it's no secret we talked about may, making something before, and I was always, ah, uh, now recording forty hours, one hundred hours of video material for you. As the people out there, I was not interested in that. To just give that to you and then take a certain price or whatever it would be okay, interesting, whatever. I don't know, but where's where's the fun? Would I enjoy that process? And my answer there is a clear no. So. Uh, that was always my comparison is always yeah giving people just like all the books they need just the, send them to the library good luck right and then leave them alone there where the new approach I enjoy that a lot right the 
uh, and my, my, my analogy to that is really going to school together, pretty much, I'll take your hand, I'm the class teacher, and I'll, this is what we start with. And this is the whole structure that I want to put into the cash game area. So now, the big moment, let's click on that for the first time. I'm a little, uh, little thrilled for that and uh, see how it looks like. And first of all, as you see, it's not overloaded. That's, and I see that as an upside. This is pretty important to understand because it's not the full library. We start together. So what you see here, and maybe I'll talk a little deeper about the structure, is that I see poker as something that is, is not a list from, from A, B, C, like whatever, how long. Um, it's, it's rather a mix and lots of things connected. So what I start with is definitely those general concepts, right? Here you have something like my general approach to poker. We'll go a little deeper in a second. And then you have the training ground as well, where we really look in depth in certain spots. Where it's like my, my analogy again is, is just sports always. If I think I might come up uh, with that even in one of the videos, right? Just like playing football, you have to be like physically in shape. That would be kind of a general concept. If you know how to approach a spot in poker, it does not necessarily you yeah be one spot that works for multiple spots. Bluff catching is not only in the three bad pot versus the triple barrel. This can be in any spot. So those are concepts that can help us in multiple spots. But then you have something like coming back to football. Well, you need to pass well with your right foot with the inner side. And what you need to do is probably just take the ball and kick it a thousand times or 10,000 times or 50,000 times in the way you learned it against that freaking wall. And this will make you good, right? So, uh, yeah. And this is what we try to do there a little. Obviously, not a thousand and fifty thousand times, but just showing you a little, okay, um, this is a specific spot. This is how this one works. This is what you can repeat and learn yourself. Um, and those training ground sections will be split again in theory, what would be right, then um, potential exploits, how does it look like if villains are doing this and that, and then for me, super important, praxis. Every single time, I will not only talk about it, but I will put that into praxis and show you how I do that, right? When it's possible in a live play, just to really jump into the zoom pool or whatever is there, and show you what I do there. And if that does not make sense for that spot, it will be a review of my database where we just filter for the certain spot, right? I cannot I cannot guarantee to, to have a nice facing check raises on the river. I cannot guarantee that that happens in a live play. So I'm rather filtering for some spots. And uh, now maybe let's talk about it a little um, together, Fedor, and uh, just showing that uh, where general approach starts, for example, with five videos, they are rather short, just me speaking to you and trying to explain what is what I'm thinking about. And uh, Fedor, maybe some words you had to uh, experience, maybe you had to, or you had the joy to, I don't know, sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's cool maybe, uh, to listen to lots of those stories and analogies that I'm using over the years and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so my summary would be that I, I think what you're really great at is breaking down complex topics into simple analogies and and so that everyone can understand it. Uh, sometimes I, you know, I think they're, they're sometimes better fitting and sometimes less fitting, but I think just the idea already is you connect it to something. And I think that connection is super important when you're learning and when you're improving is um, I, just just having oh now it's a rock pit like I use this I, I use a lot of your analogies the ones that fit for me and I think that's also great is you yourself can pick out what works for you right it's not the typical course where you just you go video one video two video three is you pick out what works for you it's like there is a guidance there's always a connection there's always the next step but it's not Poker isn't like you just go from one to 900 and then you're done. Like it doesn't work like this. And I, I really like your approach to just explain how you think about poker and then enrich that with practical examples. I think that's, I, I mean, I, I love, I love that way. I try to teach that way myself. So uh, I, I think in that way, we, we appreciate effective learning.
Yeah, yeah. I think uh, what you mentioned is, is pretty good there. Just like to connect stuff because then you remember again. But if you make your list, I know I had lots of students who start making a list, cut down the spots. I want to get really, really good button versus big blind stingray spot building flop seabed strategies. Okay, you have a clear goal. It sounds boring already, right? Uh, and then you break down aggregation reports and go through hundred different simulations in in a solver, for example have fun remembering that stuff, right? It's just super, super tough. You can use that to find patterns, to put it in your own words, to then remember your own words, and then you can apply them to different spots as well. That's pretty much the goal. And now what we skip here is the way that, well, you need to look at those 100 solves first because I'll just give you my way of thinking and that maybe maybe it's one for you, maybe it's not. But that's not not important, right? I know that some of some of the ways will be a little polarizing. That some will love it, I hope at least, and some others will think like, "What kind of bullshit is he talking about?" Um, which is totally fine because I won't use them too much when we really get to the spot. Then it's really about the theory. I will give examples where, sure, I will not read aggregation reports to you, or I won't do any like deep in-depth solver stuff, but I will use that for examples to just show, hey, this is the thing and this is how it fits to how I think. And um, yeah, so this is the first part here um, talking about, uh, I think, yeah, Fedor might, might like this year because I'm talking about something where I start with, I think I'm pretty shit at that, um, but yeah, uh, still, still talking about it. So uh, yeah, looking forward to get your feedback. Everyone who is a member of Team Poker Code already, I opened already some um, some uh, threads in our new cash game um, channels. So make sure to put it there and give me feedback and start the dis discussion. We are classmates from now on. I might be a little teacher, but it's it's not like strong uh, hierarchies or how you how you name it. It's like I'm a buddy at the same time. That kind of that kind of teacher. And I want to mention one thing here is it's not that you explain these, you know, baby concepts. It's like you played in the highest games and everything. You played the highest tournaments, the highest cash games consistently for years now. So it, it's this, you know, this, you don't need to be just sitting in the lab and just studying reports and like trying to memorize it. You can go about it with logic and you can, you can become really, really, really good that way. Like, I think that's always important is, I haven't, you know, I myself haven't looked at a solver more than 10 hours in my life. It's like I've, I've worked a lot with results and I work with people who have worked with results, but you don't need to um, memorize all that stuff. It's, it's, I, and that's what I love about poker is it's just a really great uh, challenge for your brain. And, and that's also what we want to encourage at Poker Code is like, it's not about just sitting there and like you, you know, you need to study this now and then you get a bit better. Now it's about having fun when you play and having fun learning and doing it together with with other people. So use that opportunity. We still have uh, a discount for you guys um, because specifically we want to reduce the price for longer term commitment. So if you commit to join us, to study with us, to go on that journey with us, as so many have already, like, I can tell you it's the most positive um, and helpful community I've ever been part of. People are just helpful. It's really like, I i don't remember, maybe once in the last three months I've read a negative word. It's just people constantly helping each other. And um, yeah, it's its just super awesome to see the engagement. So maybe, maybe let me add on on that because uh... Like I just, there was one point I, 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 I my mind is stuck about, uh, it's like still stuck there. And it is just, what I wanted to do here is to really make like that way of learning approach and everything about it as a high stakes player accessible for everyone. Because I like to take away that, that burden, that distance that is there in a way uh, that just like, oh, he's a high stakes player. He must be doing some crazy shit. No. Right. So if you are even like you see yourself as a fun player enjoying the evenings, but you're competitive and want to get better. Sure, I will pull out some simulations that you might have never seen before at some point. But this is really deep down there as an example. And I try to explain it in a way that makes sense. This year is just like logical thinking in a way. So everyone and I like actually I got asked who is that? Um, poker code cash who is it for and 
it was like, uh, is, is it good for NL25, for NL100, NL500 players? I don't want to make a difference at all. And I tried to come up with something to describe it. And my description was, it's for everyone who is motivated to get better at poker. It's not for someone who is just searching success or whatever. I think the way I want to do things and I started doing things is really helpful for everyone who is motivated to get better. If you are that person, then this is something for you. And that is something I'm, I'm like deeply convinced of. 100% agreed. Um, and just to pile on that, I think also in terms of money for value, I mean, we're expanding, we're adding onto things and we get cheaper. So it's now, if you subscribe for three months or a year, it's like 66 euros and 55 euros for a month. So it's like you get, you know, eight monthly coachings from like some of the best in the world. You have the cash game section, the tournament section. We're going to be preparing a lot of stuff in the future. We're going to do more content, more activities, more events, um, because we just continue. That's our, that's our credo is to just continuously add value. And then at some point, like it, it's just going to need to be, be great. Like I think it, it, ha it always has and always will be. And so just if I break that down, it's like you pay like eight euros for a coaching, like that just seems great. And all the all the access we have in the range room we have, in the community we have, like, I I mean, that's also, I think what, what Stefan said, if you're really motivated, I would have left this in 2014 when I was looking to, to get better, just nothing like that existed. So I think if you really care about working together with people and improving and you're passionate about poker, whether it's tournaments or a cash game, I think poker code is the right spot. So, and I, I really truly believe in that. So yeah, I just wanted to bring that out there. So yeah, so far just to, to uh, again, I want to come back to that. This is just the start. We are starting things together. Actually in the introduction part here, one of the videos is called just the start where I just like say hello to everyone who makes it to that point and explain a little more how to get the most out of that and how we will continue. So maybe uh, Fedor might even get hyped if I just drop some names of all the concepts he knows, right? Once we start talking about the lookalike principle, about the dice principle and all those things that just make sense by hearing them, right? That these are all made up names, obviously, but they come from somewhere. And, um, and yeah, so maybe that about the general concepts, maybe, uh, yeah, one last sneak preview. I just uh, kill the sound for a second. Um, so just to, to, for everyone who is scared of just looking at charts all the time, uh, this is the way I will present those general concepts to you. You can just lean back and listen. There is not anything like, right? Not just data sheets. This is for everyone and hopefully very understandable, uh, but I'm, I'm truly convinced of that. And, uh, yeah, now I hear you guys. Uh, we probably heard even the sound, right? I just killed the speakers and not the sound. Uh, stupid me, but whatever I was talking about, I, I hope it was kind of interesting. Technical expert Stefan Sontheimer in the house. Definitely. That's a true legend. If, if, if you need uh, any help with tech issues, um, don't ask me. So uh, <laughs> maybe let's switch to the second section before then finally starting the quiz for the guys who just came in here now. We'll have a quiz running in five to 10 minutes from now, I guess. Uh, Fedor and I have no clue what to expect. I just got the link and I, I'm the guy who has to click on start. And all of you can participate playing against Fedor and me will participate as well. And there are prizes to be won. So um, yeah. Uh, yeah, second part, coming back to the training ground, which I gave the analogy of, okay, this is single spots, you see, we start with the obvious starting spot, raising first in, big blind defense, the first and two most important things pre-flop to start with. And then we start with a flop as a, an aggressor. And this will be kind of a serious playing three bad pots where I start as well as the aggressor on the flop, because those are my so-called money making spots where you, you are just having everything under control. So this is the most important thing when thinking about concept. And the beautiful thing now to see is, well, we need some general fitness to be good in those. So we will implement what we've learned up there. We will definitely build wardrobes on the flops. We will definitely play action and reaction game. Um, so to, just to drop some names that I will talking about, uh, I'm talking about more in the videos here. And 
What I do here is I'll just click on one of those. This is uh, three videos here. I will explain fundamentals, right? This is now me having a little PowerPoint presentation for you showing some stuff around. This is a, a little longer videos. And then I talk about potential exploits. How can we deviate? I had lots of questions already. What to do on the live poker table where everyone is just like playing different to online is there. Will you provide content for that? Yes, obviously, right? If they are playing shit, we need to know what to do better. So um, this will be definitely in there. And then I cannot make a live play on, on playing, well, live in the in the casino, uh, but I definitely jumped right into the Zoom pool and, um, and gave my very best there. And actually without having too many reads about the players in there, I was playing in the morning, Zoom 200, not my main game, but I had enough things to really come up with exploits within those 20 minutes. So um, be ready for the 100% open race, uh, range open race in the small blind, changing sizing to a smaller one, stuff like that. I will explain all that deeper. And this is just really, think about that, right? The, the passing with the right foot a thousand times against the wall. I tell you how to do it. I tell you maybe a little how not to do it. And uh, then I will definitely just show you, right? I won't kick a thousand times, but for 20 minutes at least. So um, yeah. Maybe another one to look at. Um, you see exactly the same structure again. Fundamentals. Actually, this is part one. Uh, maybe this is missing in the headline. I'm just working on part two uh, to be released as one of the next uh, ones, right? So there's already something in the pipeline uh, for you if I finish so, it tomorrow. Stefan, tell us a bit. Tell us a bit more about that because I think that's really interesting. Is what what. What do you have in the pipeline? What's what's coming up? What can people look So, uh, yeah, so actually there's not too much in the pipeline right now, right? But it's still all stuck in my head. So there is a plan prepared on how to continue on those. So we talked about, you see, there's stuff about pre-flop, there's stuff about the flop. There's nothing about the turn yet, nothing about the river. So I will go through that and there will be new content released very, like every week, pretty much in the beginning, definitely two, three videos every month. Uh, I didn't make a clear commitment on that, but I'm super hyped and I will just keep going and you can rely on that. So, um, yeah, I have two ways to actually grow all that. And the first way is the very obvious one that if I would ask you now, you would come up with exactly that, right? We are going through the game tree. If the first one is the flop as aggressor, the next one will be facing flop C bets out of position, for example, right? So we are in the shoes of the big blind defender, what we talked about before here. Then we'll talk about the spot after it went goes check check on the flop. What about then turn out of position, which sizings to choose, how to build my whatever. And we'll talk about double barreling on the turn, just all the whole game tree going through every decision there might be. and. Maybe one year from now, we have everything here. And then I hope that uh, in the search bar up there, everything is perfectly that if you look for a spot and you want to do theory or want to dig deeper in theory, you will find something. It's pretty much well. Then at some point, the school might end, you, 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 you could think, which is not true because the second part to put out more and more content is talking deeper about every decision point. I obviously know more about the flop as aggressor than I can put in 23 minutes of a video presentation. But we can dive deeper in that specific spot. We can talk about, I think Fedor and uh, I, we could talk for three hours now about the flop as aggressor in monotone boards only. I think we could do that and it would not get boring. And uh, we could talk, maybe, maybe it would get boring after 45 minutes talking about dry A side boards. But that's definitely something. So you, you see where I'm heading at, where I'm aiming at uh, is just, well, in the spot itself, we can go deeper and deeper, right? A pass with the right foot is not just a pass with the right foot. You can go different directions and uh, whatever, right? So uh, maybe that analogy is not too great, but you know what I mean. So um, this is how we will continue. And one part that I'm actually loving the most is that I want you to participate. I won't let you choose all the spots because it just doesn't make sense to talk next about facing a river check race. I want to build that up in a way that it makes sense. But especially in that, where we look deeper into one decision point, I want you to participate. So I can already tell you, uh, I have it here in my calendar. Where is it? Uh, 
Yep, pen and paper because I'm not good with this computer stuff. So, um, 23rd, Wednesday 23rd, there's the first community coaching and I will let you choose the topic. So I would ask for sticking a little to what the, the theater videos are about and not talk about river check raising. But if the majority wants river check raising, we can do that, obviously. So um, my suggestion would be just to let you choose, hey, Flop, which kinds of boards to take a deeper look. And maybe for the very first session, we can talk about adding some, some ask me anything as well. But anything is possible. I want you to choose in a way. What are your needs? What do you want to look deeper into? with the mindset of, hey, we'll see each other next week and next month again. So um, right, this all a process, what do I need now, right? It's not the quick fix, you get a big course, uh, you, you sign up for Poker Code, you go through all the videos, then you cancel Poker Code again, and then, then you are all good and you crush NL1K. This is unfortunately not how it works, but as Fedor already said, if this did exist when I grew up poker-wise, this would have been my place and this is yeah it's just just the truth uh so and this is why we built that uh now finally together i love it <laughs>